we're terrible eyewitnesses. I think everyone uh, has probably heard that before. We're, we're really, really bad. And a big chunk of that, uh, there, there are two big components to that that I want to talk about right now. One is visual learning, and the other one is attention. Uh, and just to, to show you how bad you are at, at being a witness, I encourage you to uh, watch on YouTube. Uh, I don't know how you get there. I think it's Gorilla Basketball um, Memory. That will get you to an, a lovely YouTube um, and, and look at it. Uh, I don't want to give the spoiler, but suffice it to say that if, if, some, if a moose walked through this, uh, th this room where I'm doing this videotaping right now, uh, if I'm incredibly concentrating on something else, I may very well not see that moose. On a more trivial level, I see somebody day in, day out, they totally change their glasses, they change their, their hair color or their hairstyle, and I don't notice it. Okay, we're really, really bad at taking note of, of details. Um, we are poor eyewitnesses. The visual learning piece of it is, uh, is exemplified by the, the Where's Waldo game. Now, the first time you play Where's Waldo, it takes you a number of minutes to find Waldo. But the second time, you're starting to cue in to Waldo's particular outfit, red and blue stripes, uh, a lot faster. And so it might take you half as much time the second time. And by the time you're looking at your 10th Where's Waldo, it, it, it doesn't take you much time at all. This is not just about playing Where's Waldo, which uh, truthfully, I don't think any of us are, are spending much time doing um, today as adults, but uh, we all use visual learning all the time. If you want to learn how to, to hunt fossils or if you want to learn how to collect mushrooms, you have to be able to see the fossils and see the mushrooms. And it's not that they're not there, and it's not that your, your visual system isn't working. It is. They're there, and your visual system is feeding you all this information. You're just not seeing it. You're not seeing it. You're not, it's not coming to your attention. So, for example, I have a garden, and I can go out there and see no peas, and then I see one. And then I see another one. And then I'm seeing all the peas. I'm seeing tens of peas. So you have to get yourself into the mode of seeing the peas. Now, I also have strawberries. And I noticed the other day that if I go from the pea to the strawberry and back to the pea, I'm lost. So what I do is I go and I teach myself, remind myself how to find peas. I do all of the peas. And then I remind myself how to find strawberries, what I'm looking for when I'm looking for strawberries, and I pick all the strawberries. So visual learning or, or being attentive to particular uh, patterns in the visual uh, scene is something that we can adaptively do. We can also adaptively, we, we also pay attention to different parts of, of the world. And um, there is an asymmetry in the way that the brain does this, and that asymmetry leads to a condition called hemispatial neglect. Now, hemispatial neglect is always uh, due to a, a lesion in the, on the right side or on the non-dominant side, so that the left side is not being seen. It's not just that the left side isn't being seen. It's that the left side of the world does not exist. It might as well be in back of you. It's as, it's as though the left side of the world was in back of you. Well, of course you don't see in back of you. You have no eyes back there. Well, of course, that part of the world isn't there because you don't see it. You cannot see it because you cannot attend to it. Again, eye working, optic nerve working, lateral geniculate working, primary visual cortex working. But the ability to attend to that part of the visual scene not working. So that leads to hemispatial neglect. I will tell you um, a couple of stories there. One was Robert Novak. Robert Novak was a, um, uh, was a columnist. He uh, was driving along one day 
he hit a bicyclist, he didn't stop, he continued on. A couple blocks later, somebody comes and bangs on his window and says, you know, what the heck, you didn't stop, you just hit somebody. He says, no, I didn't. He, uh, he then stopped, uh, alarmed by this person's alarm. He ended up going to the, to the hospital and it ended up a few days later uh, after this incident came out, it was revealed that he had a tumor in his right parietal cortex. Now, this is completely uh, understandable. When you first heard, when I first heard the story, I, I suspected that he had not all of a sudden turned into a uh, hit and run driver, the type of person that would become a hit and run driver. I did not think that of him. Um, I was pretty sure that what he had was hemispatial neglect. So here's what I think happened: uh, the he hit the bicyclist. The bicyclist. He hit the bicyclist on the left side of, with the left side of his car. That did not exist for him. He never experienced it. A few w blocks later, somebody came up on the right side, banged on the, on the window, and, and he stopped at that point because the right side of the world does exist. Now, I should say, not only does it not exist, but, but uh, I think oftentimes people say, well, can you just tell people to turn to the left so that they can look at the, now they can look at the left with their right uh, visual field. Um, and in fact, hemispatial neglect, vision and, and, and uh, orienting movements, eye movements and head movements are so, gaze control is so, are so intertwined that people actually, the idea of turning to the left doesn't make any more sense than it would be, uh, than it would make sense to me to say, turn my head around so I'm facing backwards. Well, obviously I can't do that. So I, I wouldn't do that and, and a person who, with hemispatial neglect does not turn their gaze to the left. Another um, uh, experience with hemispatial neglect is written by, uh, is uh, shared in this book here Cole, by Cole Cohen called Head Case. And this is a really, really interesting book. Uh, she had, uh, she has a congenital condition where she essentially has a, a missing chunk of her brain. Um, uh, and, and it's in the right uh, parietal cortex. And she has, the way she describes it is extremely interesting. She essentially describes it as um, an indifference to the left side. It's not so much a neglect, but an indifference. She doesn't care about it. And if you w watch people, people with strokes, not people with tumors, but people with strokes will recover from those strokes typically. And as they get better from hemispatial neglect, they often talk about having hemispatial indifference, very similar to what Cole Cohen describes. So really fascinating. What's the neural basis? What do we think the neural basis of this is? Well, we think that the right hemisphere pays attention to the entire visual scene. It might be primarily uh, interested in the left half of the world, but it also is able to code for the right half of the world. Whereas the left, uh, um, the left uh, hemisphere only codes for the right, uh, the right half of the, of, the, of the world. So if you lose the left hemisphere, if you had a lesion here, you would lose this. You might see some deficit, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna be dramatic and it's not gonna uh, come to a person's attention. But if you have a lesion over here, you lose all of this, and there is no redundancy for the left half of the world, so you simply don't see it. So that's what we think. That's what people, not, I, you know, I have no independent knowledge of this, but um, that is the current state uh, of, um, of the field. This is where what people think is going on. Um, and finally, we are now going to end up by talking about how we learn to see.